Welcome back to a brand new video. Thank you so much for the support recently on the other videos. We gained over 250 subs already today uh, and yesterday's video or both of them are doing incredibly well. So thank you all for the likes and the subscriptions. If you are new around here, drop a sub down below and leave a like on this video if you do go on to enjoy it. It might not seem like a lot, but it genuinely goes a long way and it just helps a lot with uh, with the overall sort of motivation and morale of, of, of myself and on the channel. So... Today we have got my Division 1, uh, Division Rank 1, Division Rivals squad. Now, I actually struggled a lot with this game to start off with. Uh, I wasn't having a good time at all until I found this formation, this team, and the tactics that I use. And I have, in the last two days, gone, I think, like 16... 16 wins, like 6 draws and 2 losses and to say that I have 21 losses in the account goes a long way. I've really been doing well. Now as you can see this week so far I currently have nearly 15,000 points uh, and rank 1 is just under 10,000 points. Uh, and I haven't played any games today at all. That's all as of yesterday. So today if I played games I'd probably be on nearly 20,000 points right now. And it's all pretty much because of the team that I'm using, the players that I'm using and the formation that I started using. It's helped me out a lot so I wanted to make a video to try and help you guys out that are struggling or for you PlayStation guys that are going to get on Division Rivals soon to help you guys get a good advantage to start off with. Um, so I wanted to make a video on the squad. Now, uh, as you can see, I'm in Div 5. Well, I'm actually in, technically in Div 4, but because uh, it's not the end of the week, I haven't ranked up yet. Um, however, with Div 5, I'm in Rank 1, and I did get Rank 1 last week for Div 5 as well. Uh, so I thought we'd go straight into the squad. Now, in terms of uh, in terms of formation, the formation I'm having the most success with is the, success with, sorry, is the 4 2 3 one wide. Uh, this formation is just very successful for me and it helps me in the way I play and it's just thoroughly, thoroughly helping me out and I'm playing with a Premier League team. So, to start off in goal, I'm using Allison. Now, a lot of people have been asking me how Allison is. I'm personally really enjoying Allison. The only gripe I have, but it's a similar gripe with most goalkeepers, is goalkeepers seem super clumsy this year. Don't know if you guys have noticed, maybe you haven't, uh, but goalkeepers seem to be doing weird things where they don't pick the ball up straight away, or maybe the ball literally just ricochets and bounces off them, or maybe they're just, you know, being being really clumsy with the ball. I'm not entirely sure what it is. That and the throwing animation or like throwing the ball out, kicking the ball out. I'm not a fan personally. I just, I, keep, I seem to lose the ball a lot with, uh, with throwing or kicking the ball out. Um, and a lot of goals I can see is because uh, it's because goalkeepers are super just like they feel just sloppy, really. However, Allison has been a really good goalkeeper for me in terms of low drivens, in terms of close range shots. He seems to save a lot. He seems to save a lot of finesse shots as well. Um, and I genuinely do, uh, you know don't concede in a lot of occasions because of Allison. He just seems like a really, really good uh, goalkeeper uh, and I do really enjoy him. Now, over at the right-back spot, this is a guy that I actually packed uh, and tradable. Let me go on to say, by the way, this team is very expensive. So the majority won't be able to afford this team, but uh, you can get players that are similar in similar positions and, mem and mimic it in that way. The right-back, we've got Hector Bellerin. This is my favourite right-back I've, I've used this year. Uh, I played a lot against Nep and I played a lot against Marshall and Bellerin seems to stop the likes of Sane, the likes of uh, Inaki Williams, Depay, people like that. His pace is really, really good. And of course, a lot of defenders can catch up with players now in this game. However, Bellerin doesn't just catch up. He wraps around the player. So he doesn't try and outstrength. He wraps around and he goes for the tackle when he when he gets around to the uh, front of the player. And that's what I really like about him. He's also really good at dribbling so he can get the ball and dribble out of really difficult situations, which make it really easy for me to use him as a right back. Now, over on the uh, centre-back spots, on the right, we've actually got Eric Bailly. As you can see, I've got an array of different centre-backs to use, but I've gone with Bailly. He's actually untradeable for me and really good. He's just as good as last year, honestly. He's, he's incredible. He wins the balls. He tackles everyone. He's just a brute. He's incredible. Just as good as last year, if not better. I really do enjoy Eric Bailly. He's fantastic for me. I, uh, out of the 23 games I've used him for... I'd say he saved me on numerous different occasions, whether it be catching up with a striker and out-muscling him, whether it be out-muscling tall strikers. Uh, the only thing that I'm struggling with, with with defenders, and it's the same with the other centre-back, is near-post corners seem impossible to defend against. I've tried everything. I've tried manually putting by on the near-post and against people like Alexis Sanchez or people like someone short like Callum Wilson maybe he still seems to concede that near post header or, or overhead kick and it's just impossible that's the only gripe I have with Eric Bailly and the other centre back which is actually Davison Sanchez I believe he's still extinct actually uh he's still got a 20k 20k price range and he's still extinct but Davison Sanchez is as good as his card stats look he's incredible fantastic card um 
They're both six foot two as well, so they're both pretty tall, uh, and they both have fantastic strength, very, very good pace stats, uh, and he's very good at catching up with people as well. I really do enjoy, enjoy both of these guys, um, and uh, they're just beasts. But le yeah, like, like I said before, with Eric Bailly, it's the same with Davison and Sanchez. It's just the near post headers are just impossible to defend against. And one thing that I don't like this year about, like, the, in terms of headers and stuff, there just seems to be a lot of, of space for headers in, in the back line. I'm still trying to figure out how to defend against that, and when I do figure it out, I'll let you guys know. Now, over the left-back spot, we have got somebody that is actually the best left-back in the Premier League, and it's uh, Mendy. Six foot one. He's got very good strength, very good pace, and he's just all-round incredible. Uh, he's got great dribbling, great passing, great pace, great strength. He's all-round a fantastic left-back and one of the best cards I've used so far in terms of defenders. He's just amazing. He, he gets back really quickly. He just out muscles everybody. He's fantastic and he's always in the right place at the right time. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this card. And over at the left CDM spot, we have got ourselves uh, Moussa Dembele. This guy as well is great. Moussa Dembele is really, really good. Now, he's only, I think, yeah, he's six foot one. He's not the tallest of CDMs. However, 90 strength in game. Uh, he's got a good pace. He's got really good dribbling and really good passing stats as well. Uh, and that makes for a really good CDM, in my opinion, because the other CDM is more of a defender, uh, more of a defensive minor CDM as well. Whereas this guy, although he's really good and holds that CDM spot really, really well, he's also really good if he pushes forward at actually making an attack happen or shooting or dribbling. And that's what I really like about him. He's also got four star skills which in my opinion is very important for most players this year and it makes him a fantastic cdm over at the right cdm spot we have actually got ourselves as you guys saw a minute ago it's ndd now ndd is actually more of a defensive minded cdm and i actually really like that about him uh he still gets you know he's got two goals and five assists but he just tracks back really quickly <clears throat> he's also very short though like i say very short he's six foot now, most CDMs I've used in previous FIFAs, I've gone with like 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 6 uh, you know, the likes of Nemanja Matic, people like that. However, this guy is really good, and uh, his pace, it feels quicker than 73 in game. He just gets back really well, and he covers the uh, the entire CDM line, and I do like that. They often switch positions, which is pretty cool. I don't even have that set to do that. It's just, you know, it just happens, and I do like that about him. 92 stamina in game, he is just, he never stops running. It's great. And over at the right mid spot, we have got Riyad Mahrez. Now, Mahrez is one of my favorite players this year, 100%. At right mid, he's got 12 uh, goal contributions in 20 games. And that doesn't go to show the uh, <clears throat> the ones where he makes a pass and it just sets the play up, but he doesn't get the assist. He does that a lot too. <clears throat> he does that a lot too where he just sets the play up and uh, he makes the pass that doesn't get the assist. However, you know, it does essentially set the goal up and uh, he's fantastic. His dribbling is incredible. And what I've found is going with less pacey wingers and more pacey uh, strikers seems to be the play for me. I go down the wing and I cut in with people like Mares and I go for either a finesse shot or I pass it over to the cam or striker. And it just works really, really well. And it actually works perfectly with uh, with the left mid. That, that entire like... The entire theory I had uh, works in like really, really well with the left mid as well. And he's Alexis Sanchez. Sanchez is not the fastest. However, he's really good at dribbling, really good at shooting. He's got really decent physical stats as well. 72 strength in game, uh, 83 shot, 79 passing. He just goes through, cuts in, and that agility and balance just lets him go weave in and out of like the left back and the... Uh, the left back or the right back? The right back and right centre back. He just weaves in and either he makes a really good pass across goal or he'll shoot himself. And it's just, it works really effectively. Uh, he's only had six goal contributions in 12 games. But again, it's like Riyad Mahrez. He passes those key passes that set up the entire attack that don't get the goals. And I feel like he just gets... Really unlucky with uh, with goal contributions, but uh, he's a fantastic left mid. And uh, and at the cam spot is my favourite player that I've used this game so far. It's actually Rob Roberto Firmino. Probably like <clears throat> everyone's wondering why. This guy is just incredible. I don't get how he's so good, but he's fantastic. At Cam, he's just unbelievable. He's always at the right place at the right time. He's got an amazing shot. He's had 23 goal contributions in 26 games, which in my opinion is fantastic. He's always in just the perfect spot. Four star skills and weak foot. Um... He's not the fastest. He's not the strongest. However, you know, he's got 74 in-game strength and he's also 5'11", which doesn't feel like 5'11". It feels like 6'2". Um, and he's got Hunter Kemp style London, which gives him essentially um, 88 pace and 87 sprint speed, uh, as well as really, really good finishing long shots and, uh, and, and whatnot. He just seems like an incredible player and one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player that I've used this year. He's phenomenal. And if you guys have the coins to try him out, I recommend you guys do because he just plays incredibly at the camera roll and he's always, you know, making key passes 
touches or or hitting the ball perfectly. And at striker, we have got Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And it's no secret that this guy is just phenomenal. 21 goal contributions in 19 games. He just is always there at the right time. And he makes assists too, which is fantastic. He's either banging them in, he's either slotting them in, he's either doing an amazing long shot, a finesse shot, or he's uh, he, he's just shooting like a cross body. And one thing I've really used a lot recently, I turned off time finishing personally because I was double tapping all the time thinking that I was doing a low driven. And low drivens for me just haven't been great this year. What this guy is great at when he gets into the final third is just shooting a cross goal and it goes in most of the time. Or he does those, uh, those, those not too strong finesse shots inside the box and they also go in. But he's always just literally right there perfectly the same, at the right time time. He's got 76 in game plus 5, so essentially 81. And he outstrengths a lot of centre-backs and, and defenders and he's just always in the right place at the right time. Now, if we were go on to uh, my custom tactics, and I'll show you guys what I use. So I actually don't have anything really set up um, properly. So this is balanced. This is what I use. I use a really high width and a really high depth for balance uh, when I'm on defence. And I didn't even realise it was this high, but uh, but essentially I have it this high. I don't actually know why, but uh, but this is how I play and it, it works really, really well. Um, and then over on offence, we have uh, we have a less width because we, uh, we we push closer in. Uh, we have more plays in the box, more corners, more free kicks, uh, but it just works really well for me. I'm not entirely sure why. Then we go on to ultra defence and uh, I actually swapped to a 4 5 one for ultra defense. Um, I have really low depth, but more width. And the reason I go for a 4-5-1 brackets too, and I'll show you guys real quick uh, what the, the formation looks like, is because I feel like the 4-5-1 when you're trying to close out a victory is great for just passing it around the midfield. He still has a Bamiyang that's all the way up top on his own. He's ready to just run off and score. But it has the wingers as well that are wide, and it has the three midfielders that are all just great at passing and linking up really well. So that's why I use the 4-5-1. In terms of instructions, uh, I pretty much have it all on default. I don't have them changed at all. However, with the tactics, that's what it looks like. Now, uh, with uh, defensive and attacking, I have nothing set for these. I am going to set something at some point where I change formation for them or something. However, ultra attacking, this is what ultra attacking looks like. It's a 4-2-4 formation, and this is what my team looks like. It's pretty much the same. It's just got Firmino at top with Aubameyang this time. I haven't actually had to use it yet, but, uh, but this is what it would look like if I was to use it. And one thing I do want to actually change is I want to change the depth of my team. Uh, probably turn it down a little bit. However, as much as I want to turn it down, it's working for me. So I might keep it there. I didn't realize it was that deep or that high up, sorry. So uh, maybe I'll turn it down a little bit. However, it just seems to be working really well for me. So uh, that is what the team looks like. And that has been getting me win after win in Division Rivals. Hopefully you guys do enjoy and hopefully you guys have a lot of success in Division Rivals. Let me know down below how it all is for you and if it's working out for you or not. I'd love to know your opinions and how you are finding Division Rivals. Thank you for watching and I'll see you lads later.